Good morning. Today I'm going to be comparing my Pagani Design PD1661 with my Rolex Submariner Date 116610LN. As you can see, the watch on the left, the Pagani Design, is clearly an homage to the watch on the right, the Rolex Submariner Date. So, firstly, let's consider the prices of the two respective pieces. The PD1661 is a low tier piece at €65 Euro on AliExpress. I bought this Rolex Submariner date from a Rolex authorised dealer last year for €8,650. Euro. It's a high tier piece. Now, this watch has since been discontinued last year and therefore prices have risen. It's currently selling on the grey market on eBay and Chrono24 for between £10,000 and €11,000 because it's become a highly collectible piece as it's the last 40mm super case Submariner date. So firstly, let's look at the accessories one gets with both pieces and then I'll talk you through the two watch boxes and also the specifications of each watch. So, firstly, the Pagani design. This is the owner's instruction manual and it details the terms and conditions of the 12-month international guarantee. Although basic, it does suffice in detailing the operations of the Seiko NH35A automatic movement. This is the plastic warranty card. Uh, the 12-month international guarantee is very reassuring and I think it's perfectly acceptable to use a plastic guarantee card, bearing in mind it's a low-tier piece. One also gets a plastic tag which has Pagani design embossed which is aesthetically pleasing, a screwdriver for resizing the bracelet which is useful and lastly one gets a Pagani design microfiber polishing cloth and I always think it's nice to see a branded microfiber polishing cloth included with a watch. With regards to the watch box it's matte black cardboard has Pagani design and the emblem embossed on the lid and as you can see the interior is nicely finished the watch itself sits on a piece of foam inside a foam cutout panel which does suffice in protecting the watch in shipping perfectly acceptable for a low tier piece costing 65 euro so this is what one gets with a Rolex Submariner date a superlative certified chronometer tag as you can see it has the Rolex hologram on the reverse it has Rolex SA Geneva. So the Rolex Samara Dates is made in two plants in Biel, Bien in Switzerland and the movements are regulated and COSC certified um, in Switzerland. So the watch uh, headquarters is based in Geneva hence Rolex SA Geneva although the watch is actually uh, produced in Biel or Bien in Switzerland. The plastic warranty card comes in this leather wallet which is aesthetically pleasing. On the reverse we have Rolex and the Coronet and you also get a guarantee manual which details all the authorised dealers in the world. You can return the watch to full service or alternatively a warranty repair. And you also get a Rolex Submariner date owner's instruction manual which is very comprehensive and a very good read if you're unfamiliar with the calibre 3135 automatic movement used in the piece. And lastly you get a authorised dealer card which details which material the watch is made from and in this case it's made from oyster steel so they've ticked the oyster steel box. The Submariner date is made from 9040 oyster steel. With regards to the box the Submariner Dates comes in this magnolia coloured outer cardboard protective watch box and as you can see on the lid to the watch box it has the Rolex Coronet. Now first I want to clarify something, this is often erroneously referred to as the Rolex Crown but it's not a crown, it's actually a coronet. I'll explain the difference between a crown and a coronet. With the points to a crown they have arches in between the points on a king's crown. With a coronet, which is often worn by a queen, they have straight points rather than arches. So this is actually a coronet rather than a king's crown, which would have arches in between the points. But however, it's often referred to as a Rolex crown. And as you can see, we also have a gold Rolex coronet on the lid to the watch box. The watch box is made from wood and it's coated in a PU leather. And firstly, I'm going to give criticism to Rolex because I think this is very disappointing. This is a high tier piece, it's €8,650 and really it's a disappointing watch box one would expect to see on a mid tier piece such as a Steinhardt Ocean 1 rather than a high tier piece such as a Rolex. The lid is hinged and the interior is finished to a high standard, it's fully upholstered in a velour fabric which is aesthetically pleasing and the watch itself sits on a padded pillow cushion as one would expect. 
But really, I think Rolex could make more efforts and improve the quality of their watch boxes. For example, I prefer the wooden lacquered watch box that the Amiga Seamaster comes in. Uh, or alternatively, I really think they should coat the watch boxes with leather rather than plastic. This PU leather really is abhorrent and I think it really lets the watch down. It doesn't give it a luxury feel. So with regards to the two watches, the PD1661 is an homage to the 116610LN. So it has the same dimensions as the Supercase. 40mm case diameter, 20mm lug width, the Oyster style bracelet tapers from 20mm down to 16mm at the clasp. They both have the same 48mm lug to lug measurement which is the sweet spot for all wrist sizes as I've discussed in my previous reviews. Now the only notable difference in terms of dimensions is the Rolex Submariner date is 12.6mm thick but the PD1661 is slightly thinner at 12.4mm so the Pagani design is 0.2mm thick thinner than the Rolex Samarina dates but however that's not notable or noticeable on the wrist they both have the same heft and wrist presence feeling now with regards to the heft let's check the weight of both pieces and we'll see is there any uh, difference between them because they're both 40 millimeter cases so I'm going to use my Salter electronic scales and we'll measure the weight precisely so 151 grams for the PD1661 and we'll check the Samarina date in comparison. 159 grams. Now, there's only 8 grams of difference between the two watches, so really it's negligible. On the wrist, it's not noticeable. They both feel exactly the same. And I'll give you a wrist shot of both pieces so you can see they both look uh, the same as well as feeling the same on the wrist. Now, one thing to note is the Submariner Dates bracelet has 12 full links, as does the Pagani Design. I haven't sized this Pagani Design bracelet. So as you can see, it is loose on my wrist. I can easily fit an index finger underneath the bracelet. So 12 links in both of the Oyster bracelets and only 8 grams of difference in the heft. So the 40mm supercase uh, dimensions used in the PD1661 feel exactly the same on both pieces as one would expect. The bezels also look the same as does the sapphire crystal and ceramic bezel inserts. So I would say that the PD1661 is a good homage to the Samarina date. The only thing I will criticise is the use of mirror polish centre links in the PD1661 and also the centre section of the flip block clasp is mirror polished. I personally prefer the brass satin finish used on the Kermit and Hulk homages, the PD1661s. Um, I think it's better looking with a brass satin finish rather than mirror polish sensor links, but however, it is subjective and some collectors do actually prefer mirror polish sensor links because they think uh, it's more aesthetically pleasing, which is absolutely fair enough. So, very comfortable piece to wear thanks to the 12.4mm uh, thickness. And I really like it, so I think that uh, they've done a good job. One thing I really like about the PD1661 is the use of an exhibition case back. And although the Seiko NH35A automatic is undecorated, it is nice to see the movement running in the uh, inside the uh, exhibition case back. And I like the use of the mineral crystal. It's a very well executed uh, screw down exhibition case back, which adds interest to the back of the watch. So I'll give you a wrist shot of my Samarina date in comparison and you can see how it looks on my 8-inch wrist. So as I've discussed, this has the full 12 links and as you can see, I can easily fit my index finger underneath the bracelet. So the Oyster bracelet that comes on both watches will fit up to an 8.5-inch wrist with no problems whatsoever. Very similar fit, as you can see, both 40mm, both 48mm lug-to-lug measurement, both 20mm. Similar um, stainless, steel brace, uh, stainless steel bezels, sapphire crystals. Now, there's no anti-reflective coating on the Submariner date. Rolex do put AR coating on the underside of the Cyclops magnifier, but they don't put AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal, which is a disappointment. Bearing in mind that this is a high tier piece costing €8,650, one would really expect to see AR coating. Even a Steinhardt Ocean 1, which is a mid-tier piece, costing under €500, Euro, has AR coating. And really, this is a 2020 piece, so it's wholly unacceptable to have a high-tier piece with no AR coating. And I think that is a disappointment. 
The glide lock clasp is well executed and the quality of the finishing as one would expect is of a higher level than on the Pagani design and also the luster and sheen of the 904L Oyster Steel is more aesthetically pleasing. One can see the grains of the metal, the luster is done to a higher standard and it is a nicer finish. 904L gives a, a slightly different luster to um, 316L grade stainless steel used by Pagani Design and it is noticeable on the wrist you can see the luster difference. So I'll just show you that because you might not be aware of it if you haven't owned a watch made from 904L before. If you look at the outer links and also the center sections of the bracelet, there is a slight difference in the luster between the two pieces. 904L has a, a more gray finish to the grain of the metal, whereas 316L has a more silver finish and it's noticeable in daylight particularly one can see the luster is different uh, between the two. So I personally prefer the 904L luster of oyster steel to the 316L grade stainless steel. But however, it's subjective. Um, the majority of collectors wouldn't notice the difference because the silver tone of the two stainless steel, um, the 316L and the 904L is very similar. So with regards to the sapphire crystals, neither have AR coating. And bearing in mind that this only costs 65 euro, I think it's perfectly acceptable that Pagani Design do not use AR coating. Both have 2.5 times magnification sapphire, uh, Cyclops magnifiers. Now, early versions of the PD-1661 only had 1.5 times magnification, and then they later upgraded to 2.5 times magnification, which is the same as the Submariner date. So really, no difference in specification. They don't have AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystals. The only real difference is the Rolex Samarina date has AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal. With regards to ceramic bezel inserts, both made from ceramic. Now Rolex calls the ceramic serichrome and I'll explain how they make the serichrome bezel on the Samarina date. Rolex heat up the serichrome to a very high melting point, a uh, very high temperature of 1,600 degrees Celsius. And then what they do is they sinter platinum into the minute ticks and also the Arabic numerals on the serichrome bezel insert. And then they let the serichrome cool down from 1,600 degrees Celsius to room temperature. And what that has the effect of, it bonds the sintered platinum into the engravings on the serichrome and that is an alternative to using paint. Now with Pagani Design, it's just a ceramic bezel insert and it has the engraved numerals and minute ticks infilled with white paint. Now here's the ironic thing. I actually prefer the look of the Pagani Design ceramic bezel insert to the serochrome bezel used on the Samarina date. If you look at the Rolex um, Samarina date, it has a dull silver tone to the platinum used on the uh, minute ticks and also the Arabic numerals. And it's very dull. It doesn't contrast very well with the glossy finish to the serochrome, the black ceramic. But if you look at the Pagani Design PD-1661 on the left, the white paint does contrast very well with the glossy black ceramic. So in terms of legibility, the truth is, the PD-1661 white Arabic numerals are more legible than the uh, serochrome infilled with platinum. I actually would prefer Rolex to either use loom on the bezel, as is the case with the um, Tudor Pelagos, for example. I think that's a better option. Um, or alternatively, use white paint. The truth is white paint is better looking and more aesthetically pleasing than using platinum, which actually has a dull silver tone. So I dislike the uh, ceramic bezel used on the Samarina, but I do like the ceramic bezel used on the PD-1661. Now, bezel action. Early versions of the Pagani Design PD-1661 were known for having poor bezel action. They had lateral side-to-side -side play, which this one doesn't have. It's a 2021 version, so it's um, updated, it's improved. No back play whatsoever on this. The bezel action on this is tight, and also the alignment is perfect. The loom pip and triangle on the bezel insert align perfectly with the 12 o'clock triangle index on the dial. So the bezel action on this is light. I would describe it as lighter than on a Seiko SKX007 or a Steinhardt Ocean 1, for example. I personally prefer heavier bezel actions such as Seiko or alternatively Steinhardt. But having said that, the performance of it is good. The execution is good. No back play whatsoever, no side to side lateral play and the alignment is correct. 
Now, with the Rolex Sabrina date, yes, I have to concede that the bezel action is superior. It feels smoother throughout the 120 clicks, light resistance, but silky smooth. No back play whatsoever and no lateral side to side play as one would expect. It's the perfect bezel action. But however, it's not actually a pleasant bezel to use. And the reason for that is the scalloping on the teeth to the oyster steel bezel are actually very sharp. And I'm wearing a gloved hand, so it's not noticeable. But with a, an index finger and thumb, when one is rotating a Rolex Submariner date bezel, the teeth feel very sharp and they actually dig into the skin. It's an unpleasant bezel to use. And this is something that Rolex fanboys will never admit because they're biased. And of course, they will never admit any flaws with the Rolex Submariner date. But the truth is, the bezel is actually unpleasant to use due to the sharp scalloping of the teeth of the bezel. I actually prefer the Steinhardt Ocean 1 bezel because the scalloping is bigger on the teeth and therefore the teeth points are actually more blunt, the more rounded rather than being sharp points. And on the Steinhardt Ocean 1, uh, the teeth of the bezel don't dig into the index finger and thumb. But on the Rolex Submariner date, the truth is they do. Now, from the point of view of being purposeful, yes, it does work very well because if you've got a wet hand or if you're wearing gloves, the teeth do dig into the fingers so one can get a good grip of it and that is the purpose of a diving timing bezel to be grippy. Um, but however, uh, it's unpleasant to use and I actually feel that it's too light. The resistance isn't um, stiff enough. I prefer the resistance on a Seiko bezel or a Steinhardt because they're harder to turn and it's actually more pleasant to use because they have louder clicks and the clicks feel more heavily indexed. I always feel that with a Submariner date, the bezel is too light and the clicks are too fine. So the truth is the bezel action on the Simona date is better than the Pagani design. But in terms of the feeling of using it, this actually feels better um, when one feels the index finger and thumb on the teeth. It doesn't dig into the skin. So I would actually argue that the Pagani design PD1661 bezel is more pleasant to use, even though it has a lighter bezel action. And also um, it's not as well executed in terms of the clicks, but in terms of the looks, uh, as I've discussed, really, I think the white paint looks better than the platinum. That's the truth of it. So with regards to the case backs, one thing I like about the Pagani Design PD1661 is the use of an exhibition case back. It adds interest to the back of the watch. Now, yes, the Seiko NH35A is undecorated, but it's good to have an exhibition case back to see the automatic movement uh, winding. Now, with Rolex, I have to give them criticism because it's a very boring, plain, sterile uh, stainless steel case back. As you can see, the center section is just brushed. It looks the same as on my Bliger PA21 Explorer, which I've modified into a Pagani Design Explorer. Coinage finishing to it. Now, yes, the execution is good. It does provide an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters. Technically, it's a good case back. But however, it's just very plain and boring. They don't even engrave it with the specification of the watch or Rolex or it doesn't have the coronets, for example. They could do a lot with it, but it's just very plain and boring to look at. And really, I think as a, with a high tier piece costing €8,650, Euro, I think it's a disappointment. The truth is, I actually prefer the look of the Pagani design case back because it's nice to see the movement. And the calibre 3135 used in the Rolex Submariner date is a nice movement to look at. It does have nice pelage finishing on the bridges of the movement, although it doesn't have a decorated rotor, it's just plain. So I would prefer to see Rolex using an exhibition case back glazed with sapphire crystal, as used by um, Amiga on the Planet Ocean, for example. It's nice to see the calibre 8900 movement in the uh, Amiga Planet Ocean. So I prefer the case back used on the Pagani design to the sterile stainless steel case back used on the Submariner date. Now with regards to the bracelets, the truth is the 9040 Oyster Steel is more aesthetically pleasing due to the luster as I've discussed. As you can see when I tilt it in the light you can see the luster. The 9040 Oyster Steel does have a superior luster to it. The execution of it, as one would expect, is better. Screw pins in the bracelet, the mirror polishing is flawless. And really, with regards to the feeling of the screw pins going through the links, no play whatsoever. It is the perfect oyster bracelet, perfect fit of the end links in the supercase. But having said that, 
the PD1661 doesn't have a bad bracelet. It's actually very good for the price point of the watch. The end links are a good fit to the case, solid end links, and although I dislike the mirror polishing to the sense links, the truth is it is mirror polished to a high standard, and the brush satin finish to the 316L stainless steel is also done to a high standard. I think that they deserve full credit for not cutting corners. The screw pins in the bracelet are a good fit to the links, and there isn't a lot of play in it. Now, yes, the flip lock isn't as well finished as on the glide lock on the Samarina dates, but this is 65 euro, not 8,650 euro. So there's a massive price difference, and one has to expect some cost cutting measures. Now, with regards to the interior, this is actually very similar to the early versions of the Samarina dates, they did have a satin finish to the center section of the glide lock clasp. So it is a good copy or homage to the early versions of the uh, glide lock, although as I've discussed in previous reviews, it doesn't have the glide lock mechanism. It simply has a five millimeter extension divers link, which is like the Rolex easy link extension. I prefer to see Pagani Design use a glide lock, um, even if that means it increasing the price of the piece, I think it would be worth doing that. But the clasp is well finished, and it does do the job to a satisfactory standard. So I'll show you the Rolex glide lock in comparison, and you can see that it is finished to a higher standard. It is beautifully engraved with Rolex, as you can see, and Geneva, and also it has the reference numbers of the clasp. And the reverse, it does have the glide lock mechanism, but however, Again, I have to give criticism to Rolex. You'll have recently seen my Carly Wet review of the uh, Glide Lock and also my Bliger Glide Lock review. Now, the interior of that is unfinished. And also, if you look at this is a Rolex Samarina Date Glide Lock. They haven't mirror polished the interior of the Glide Lock clasp. It's just a brush satin finish. Now, yes, the finishing of it is better than on a Bliger or a Carly Wet Glide Lock clasp. That's a given. But really, for a high tier piece costing €8,650, this is a disappointment. I don't really think that this is high tier finishing. I think that this is a very poorly finished interior to a glide lock. These are the kind of cost cutting measures that Rolex um, use. And I really think this is an, a real disappointment. I think that they should be mirror polishing the interior to the same flawless finish as the flanks to the exterior and also the flanks of the case and the flanks of the bracelet. That's the best that Rolex can come up with in 2020 with a glide lock. And even in 2021, they still haven't improved the quality of the finishing on the interior. So I would say that the glide lock, although it does work very well, it's not aesthetically pleasing to look at and the finishing is poor. That's the truth of it. And again, this is the kind of thing that a Rolex fanboy will never admit that the Rolex Savannah date isn't a perfect watch. There are areas which could be improved. Yes, the coronet embossed on the flip block of the glide lock clasp is aesthetically pleasing and it is done to a nice standard, as is the brush satin finish, as I've discussed. Lovely luster to it. The grains of the oyster still are polished to a nice satin finish. So with regards to crown execution, the screw down trip lock crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters, as one would expect. Silky smooth. It really is the best crown action I've ever experienced on a watch. But having said that, the Pagani Design PD1661 feels exactly the same. It's also a very well executed screw down crown, although it only provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters because it has two rubber O-rings. This trip lock crown has three rubber O-rings, hence the name trip lock. There are three hermetic seals rather than two. So I would say yes, uh, the Rolex coronet embossed on the uh, crown is aesthetically pleasing and the coin edge finishing is done to a high standard. But the truth is, there really isn't much difference between the quality of the finishing. This also has the Pagani Design emblem embossed, as you can see, and it is mirror polished to a flawless finish. The quality of the uh, coinage finishing to the crown is also done to a high standard. So is this really worth €8,650 compared to this crown, which is on a €65 Euro piece? The truth is, this twin lock crown, effectively, because it has two rubber O-rings, compared to this trip lock crown with three, Yes, this is superior in hermetic seal, 300 meters to 100 meters, but the finishing and it, the build quality isn't so different. The crown on the Pagani design does, smooth, uh, does screw down silky smooth on the crown tube, as does with the Rolex Samarina date. There really, there really isn't that much difference in terms of the execution. I would say that for 65 euro, Pagani design deserve full credit for producing an outstanding screw down crown execution. It's very smooth to operate and it does feel very good to manually wind the movement. 
So let's talk about the movements. This uses the Calibre 3135, which is a reliable, well-proven Rolex movement. It's been used in a number of pieces for a long period of time. It's a technically excellent movement. It runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz, and it has 31 joules. Hand winding and hacking, as one would expect, and as you can see, a date complication at 3 o'clock. One thing I like about 4 hertz movements, such as the Calibre 3135, is they give a characteristic smooth sweep to the second hand around the dial. So I really like that 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, and it's another reason why I like other Swiss movements, such as the Salita SW200-1 and the ETA2824-2. They also share the same 4 hertz uh, frequency and 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate. So it really is the sweet spot. Uh, I think 28,800 vibrations per hour is the perfect compromise between power reserve and accuracy. Now, with regards to the Seiko NH35A in comparison, 24 dual movement, it does have hand winding and hacking, and as you can see, a date complication at 3 o'clock. Now, Seiko movements in comparison run at 3 hertz frequency, and they have a beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour. The characteristic of a 3 hertz movement in comparison is the second hand has a judder or stutter around the dial rather than sweeping as smoothly as a 4 hertz movement. So being critical of it, one could say, well, the 3 hertz um, sweep of the second hand isn't as silky smooth. It, it doesn't sweep, it judders, it stutters. I do like a 4 hertz sweep of a second hand compared to the 3 hertz we're looking at here, but however, it's subjective. Some collectors will not mind the 3 hertz um, stuttering of the second hand. The NH35A, which is made in Japan, is a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement, and it's very accurate when it's regulated. This one is running at plus 5 seconds per day. So, lastly, I'll talk about accuracy. The Rolex Calibre 3135, used in this Submariner date, is COSC chronometer certified. So cost chronometer limits are minus four to plus six seconds per day. And then Rolex also regulate and certify the movement as a superlative chronometer themselves. And this one is running at plus one second per day. So Rolex superlative chronometer limits are zero seconds to plus two seconds per day. And quite often they exceed that. For example, this one is regulated to plus one second. This is running at plus five seconds in comparison, which is excellent. So Rolex regulate their movements in five positions. Seiko only regulate their movements in their Japanese plants in two positions. But one can regulate the movements to five positions to improve the accuracy. The stated accuracy of the NH35A is minus 20 to plus 4. 40 seconds, which is a wide range, but they can easily be regulated to better than that. And I think five seconds per day is perfectly acceptable from an NH35A. So really, there isn't that much difference in terms of accuracy. This one's running at plus one second. This one's running at plus five seconds. So only four seconds per day of accuracy. Now, of course, one can't argue that the NH35A is anything like as good in terms of build quality as the Calibre 3135. The 3135 is better in every aspect. It is a superior movement. Better build quality, better finishing, better materials, better accuracy, and also better performance. This has a five-year service interval. Now, with regards to the NH35A, it also has a recommended five-year service interval, but it's worth talking about because... The cost of servicing a 116610 LN in 2021 is 600 euro for a standard Rolex service center service. Now with regards to NH35A, servicing costs, really one doesn't service an NH35A for the simple reason one can buy a brand new NH35A movement made in Japan for only 30 euro. So really it's not cost effective to service a Seiko NH35A movement. It is more cost effective to simply replace it with a brand new one for 30 euro. And every five years that is an option. But the reality is that the Seiko NH35A quite often runs for in excess of 10 years with no servicing, no lubrication whatsoever. And it still is reliable. It's a good, solid, reliable workhorse movement. So that's something to bear in mind. 600 euro to service a Submariner date compared to 30 euro to replace the NH35A movement with a brand new one. Now, what do I think of the two pieces overall? Well, usually in my reviews, I apply the following criteria or what should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. 
So the respective price points of these two watches, as discussed, are €65 euro for the PD1661 or €8,650 euro for the Samarina dates. But in reality, it's now ten to €11,000 euro because it's discontinued and therefore the prices have risen, as I've discussed. I don't consider the Rolex Samarina date to be excellent value. But however, yes, I do consider it to be excellent quality. With regards to the Pagani Design PD1661, yes, I consider it to be excellent quality and yes, I consider it to be excellent value. This is the best Rolex Samarina date homage money can buy for under €100. Euro. If you want better, you have to pay under €500 euro and go for a mid-tier piece such as the Steinhardt Ocean 139 Ceramic. That is a better watch, but of course it's significantly more expensive and it's Swiss made and it uses a Salita SW200-1 Swiss movement. So for under €100, euro, this cannot be beaten. It is the best um, Samarina date homage. So how do I see the Samarina date in comparison? Because I've said it's not excellent value. I wouldn't even say that it's good value. I think the value is okay and certainly not at 10 to 11,000 euro. I think that this is a 2,000 euro watch. That's the reality of it. The reason why Rolex retail it for 8,000 euro 650 euro was because they spend a lot on development for example the new rolex 126610 ln uses a new movement it uses the caliber 3235 and rolex spent millions of swiss francs in the research and development of that caliber 3235 because 90 percent of the parts in the movement in the 3135 were redesigned in the caliber 3235 to make it more efficient and to extend the power reserve from 48 hours to 70 hours the other thing they did was they invested millions of swiss francs in developing a new high performance lubricant for the caliber 3235 and that high performance lubricant extends the service interval of rolex watches from five years to ten years respectively so that is good it's a notable improvement the other thing that rolex do is they spend millions of swiss francs per year sponsoring sporting events such as wimbledon tennis tournaments and the other thing they do is they pay millions of swiss francs to sponsor brand ambassadors such as the tennis player roger Fer roger federer for example so pagani design obviously don't have any of that expense they're using seiko nh35a movements in the pd1661 therefore they don't have to invest in developing high performance lubricants or movements themselves they simply buy in movements from seiko so the truth is i see the submariner date as a 2000 euro watch which is sold for 8650 euro really the specification the build quality and the materials are a 2000 euro watch it's just that they are retailed at 8650 euro because of the reasons outlined and also because of the profit margin to the hans wilsdorf foundation which is the parent company of rolex sa geneva it's registered as a charity in switzerland but of course there is huge profit margin on a watch which costs 2000 euro to produce and is retailed at 8650 euro with the pagani design pd1661 it's a completely different business model Pagani Design manufacture their watches in Gangzhou in China and they've been making watches there since 2012. Now they work on a very slim profit margin. This watch is sold on AliExpress by resellers for 65 euro. The cost of producing the watch is between 20 and 30 euro. Now their profit margin is very slim as a result because it is actually expensive for them to buy in the movements from Seiko. They're made in Japan rather than Malaysia. And even though they mass produce all the parts uh, of the watch themselves, um, it is a very fine margin. They work on volume, so they produce a batch of 100,000 watches and their margin on each piece might only be as little as 10 to 20 uh, euro per piece compared to the three to four thousand euro of profit margin which i think that rolex sa geneva make on each one of their pieces even after paying for research and development even after paying for um, the uh, cost of sponsoring sporting events and advertising marketing and also um, sponsoring brand ambassadors so really there is less profit margin on the pd1661 but the truth is it is excellent quality and excellent value compared to the sabarina date which is okay value and excellent quality now last of all i'll do a loom test because i always do it in my reviews and i think it might be of interest to you to see how the loom performs on both pieces respectively 
So firstly, we'll charge up the PD1661 to its absolute maximum using my 100 LED UV torch. Right, so that's now fully charged. And then we'll charge up my Rolex Submariner date to its absolute maximum and we'll see how that performs. And that's now fully charged. Right, so as you can see on the left we have the PD1661 which uses blue Luminova. And on the right we have my Rolex Submariner Date which uses Rolex Chromalite which is very similar to Swiss BGW9 Super Luminova. Now the Rolex Chromalite glows in a lighter blue tone as you can see and one could say that that's more aesthetically pleasing. And the blue Luminova used by Pagani Design is a darker tone. Now initially uh, I have to give credit to Pagani Design, the Luminova does glow reasonably brightly and it's a good colour match between the applied indices and the Mercedes hands but however on the Rolex Samarina dates one has to say that the chrome light is superior. It's glowing brighter initially and it's also continuing to glow for a brighter length of time. Now also if you look at the loom pip on the ceramic bezel inserts you can see the Rolex loom pip is glowing brighter with chrome light whereas the Pagani design loom pip on the ceramic bezel insert has faded to nothing immediately. So yes, Rolex Chromalite is the very best of Swiss loom. It really is top grade and it's very good quality. So I have to admit that it is worth paying the extra to get good quality loom on a watch and one can see as time goes on, the Pagani design loom is fading very quickly to nothing compared to the Rolex Chrome Lights, which is continuing to glow brightly on both the applied indices and also the hands. So that's a notable difference between the two things. Now, the two pieces. Now, what I would say is I think Pagani design really should consider upgrading uh, the quality of their loom from Luminova to BGW9 Super Luminova um, because it would be worth it even if... Um, they have to charge extra and increase the price of the watch to say 100 euro um, to make improvements like a glide lock clasp, AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal and also uh, BGW9. With the Rolex really the loom can't be improved, there is no better loom. Uh, Seiko Lumabrite is also very high performance as is Swiss BGW9 Super Luminova. I really think Chromalite is equal in quality to BGW9 Super Luminova, there's no difference. So that's the two pieces compared. Now, I would say to you, if you're looking for a Submariner Date Homage, the best under 100 euro uh, Submariner Date Homage is the PD1661. If you have a budget of under 500 euro, I would highly recommend the Steinhardt Ocean 139 Ceramic, which I think is the best under 500 euro Submariner Date Homage. And of course, if you have the money, I would say, yes, the Rolex Submariner Date is an excellent watch, but I really see it as a 2,000 euro watch rather than a 10 to 11,000 euro watch, which is the current market value. So I hope you've liked my comparison between the two pieces. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.